Hi everyone, it's Randall with Carter Hill Honeybees. A couple months ago, someone asked me to talk more in depth about the community feeder I built a few years ago. And today, I'll take this opportunity to talk more in depth. I'm gonna provide you measurements, uh, my thinking behind this and, and, and how I built it. It's, it's really pretty simple. First, I'll tell you what kind of gave me the idea for this. And this is a, I don't know if you can get this anymore, but this is a Walter T. Kelly plastic top. And I'm not exactly sure when they first started manufacturing these, but I do know I've got about 10 or 12 of these, and I don't know which ones are which. I think this is one of the new ones I bought 15 years ago. But I know I've got a couple that was belong to my grandfather back from the early 1980s, so these last for a very long time. Probably five or six years ago, I was needing to feed my bees in the winter time, and I t these are one solid piece, they're not gonna leak. So I went out and scooped up some pine cones uh, on two or three of them and put them on my porch and filled them with sugar water. I don't even think that each one of these holds a gallon, if I remember right, maybe a couple of quarts or whatever. They just don't hold much. And in the winter, if I got bees that, that needs fed, I like to bring them here and feed them instead of going around to the yard. It's just more efficient to do it that way. So very quickly, I noticed that there was not enough volume here to last more than two or three hours. And these, these every day when I come home from work, these are, bone dry. I knew I needed more capacity. I, you know, I got to wondering how I could do that, and I also wanted to get this off my porch. But the problem with putting it outside in the elements is, you know, if it rains in there, it dilutes the sugar water, and I didn't want that issue either. So after a little bit of thought, I kind of come up with an idea. So this is this is what it is. Now the construction of this is based solely off this sheet of tin. So I tried to make this as simple as possible. So the piece of tin is three foot wide, eight foot long. So the construction of this whole thing is based on this sheet of tin to provide the protection under there from the elements. I don't want it raining in my sugar syrup. I can just pour it out and not worry about it if it does rain. But also, if you'll notice like this, it's, it's low. You know, it'd be hard to take a five gallon bucket and refill these tubs when I need to. So I've got, I've got this design where it'll tilt up. So now I'm gonna go through and give you the measurements of this and, and, and kind of talk about my thinking on parts of it. So here at the bottom, I've got two two by sixes attached to the bottom of the leg. So each one of them is uh, 48 inches. So that's basically one eight foot two by six cut in half. And then I've got the leg screwed to that. Well, the reason I've, I doubled them up like that was just for weight and stability. And I made them a lot, you know, pretty much a lot wider than what would be necessary but I was also trying to compensate for potential wind loads up here, you know, trying to blow it over. So that's one reason I made it a little heavier, doubling up and a little bit longer than it needed to be. So now will be the, the legs there too before, and all this wood is tr uh, pressure treated by the way. So I, I made those 46 inches and they ain't gotta be that exact length, but that's just the length I made. It was handy for me. You can, you know, you can make this however you want if you decide you want to do this. So these are 46 inches tall and they're just screwed in on each side. They're, they're sandwiched in between the two two by sixes down there, just screwed together. And to secure the top down to that lid, I've got four inch carriage bolts. I think these are five sixteenths in diameter. So I would, I'd probably get five sixteenths or three eighths. I think I drilled these holes three eighths and used five sixteenths just to have a little slack to make it easier. So that works pretty good. And to make it to where it'll tilt up, this will tilt either way. I just simply come in here with a jigsaw and rounded the top off on each leg. And that allows me to tilt this up and down. If you don't do that, you can't tilt it up. So you gotta round it off. Each one of these tubs right here will hold two and a half gallon sugar syrup. Uh, it looks like I've had a visitor, maybe a possum or something, about eat all, all my cones up or gnaw them up. So I'm gonna have to get some fresh cones. But these cones have been in here for I've been using these same cones for about four years. So that's, that's no problem. Pine cones are plentiful here in, in the Northwest Alabama. Now, if there's something I would probably do a little different, uh, you may can see it, you may can detect in the video, but there's a little swag to this here. Uh, I probably would either make the, this out of two by six or I would add a gusset here for support, but it's probably okay, but it is sagging a little bit. So that right there is just simply two eight foot pressure treated two before screwed to the legs on the back, front and the back, right here. 
And these tubs I got at Tractor Supply, they hold two and a half gallons. They're in the livestock section, I believe, but they're, they're basically used for, to feed chickens or goats or whatever. But they work very well for a community feeder. So next will be these slats across here. They're just one by four pressure treated pieces of lumber. And I cut them 24 inches. And I just uh, stood one up on end and screwed them and spaced them so they're spaced about three quarters of an inch apart. They don't even have to have that many of them on there. You can space it out more if you you know if you so desire. And then up top, I just got a simple square that's made out of pressure treated two by fours. So you can see I got the tape pulled across that two by four, and, which is the same as this, and that's 90 inches on both of those. And the two on the ends are 33 inches each. And the one before securing the ten to the two by fours is 36 inches long. And I just got four of them total across here. That's all you need. I have a. I had the tin screwed into the one before's with just some one inch rubber gasketed self-starting bolts. So that's all the basic measurements and the carriage bolts that you'll need to assemble this. This is really pretty simple. It only took me, um, I think it took me less than two hours to put this together. I've had it a few years. Works really good. So I, with this setup right here, I can put uh, 10 gallon of sugar syrup out here. Like last February when I had, I, I didn't feed my colonies properly last fall I had to bring several home so I wound up having 38 colonies here to feed out of the 38 colonies will go through 10 gallons of sugar syrup in just a couple three hours in February on a, on a good day that they can fly I needed to do something additional about the quantity of the amount of sugar syrup I had it wasn't lasting long enough and I was concerned about my bees not getting enough at one time but I just took a tote and drilled a bunch of 70 millimeter holes on each side there's some scrap lumber and pine straw in there. Now, this is a 35 gallon tote, but I'll, I'll put about 12, 15 gallon in there, depending on the day and how, how much I want to feed. The thing I immediately noticed, the bees, they don't drink this near as fast as they do that. So the bees will, will get this out of the open feeder in the first part of the day, and then they'll resort to this later in the day. So I'm able to feed more sugar syrup to the bees that way. What I'm getting at is if I put 10 gallon in here and 10 gallon up here, They'll drink this 10 gallon first before they'll really get on this. So they're all, there's always still some left in this when I get home at the end of the day. So my bees has got feed continuously all day. So that's what I was after. And this works really good. A word of caution though, uh, I learned this last year. Uh, one day it was going to be sunny and I left this lid up like this. And it was kind of one of those days in late February, March where after the front come through, it was kind of windy. So it actually shifted the feeder off my blocks. I do set them on some cap blocks to get them off the ground. So that's it. That's basically the measurements, the simplicity of it. Uh, my thinking behind this community feeder, it works really well for me. And I also utilize this some in August and early September, but mostly I use this in late winter for colonies that, that I need to bring home and feed up in a hurry because it, this, this gets a lot of syrup in, in several colonies in a hurry. And it's convenient for me uh, at that time of the year because it gets dark just almost as soon as I get home so I can go out here and fill these up as I leave for work and let the bees do their thing and then as the as the bees take on enough weight I can move them out back to their yards as needed and and feed them that way and that works really good for me another thing I like about this design is as big and bulky as it is I can move it by myself and, and here's how I do that so I got this two wheel hand truck so I just put it under one end make sure the tires are aired up good and then I take a ratchet strap and ratchet around it and then I can just come over here and pick it up on this end and move it around like a gigantic wheelbarrow and it's pretty easy to move that way and that's how I moved it over here for my building to go in now that it's done I'll find its new home or location and I'll put it there and I'll take that that off and set it back up on this box all by myself and I didn't, I didn't have to get no help to do it. So there we have it, that's my description, the, the, kind of the cut list of the my community feeder. So uh, if some of you are interested in this, uh, that's the information I have on it and my thinking behind it. Well, thank you for joining me for this video today. Never stop learning, we'll catch you on the next one.